audience, hello and welcome back to Ickety Streams Create a Thought and Beyond. Look at the mess behind me and the mess over there and the mess in that direction and the building project I actually never stopped or started or finished or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello, how are you doing? Happy Friday, yay! I hope everybody had a wonderful week and if you didn't, it's fine now. You've made it to the weekend and that's all that matters. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, everything seems to be working. I figured out before I before I go into the usual spill with, with the with the the quests and the things. Before I go into the usual spill, I figured out what was causing the lag potentially, so we shouldn't see it again. And weirdly, it was solved by Coffee Then Code, who told me about the whole map thing. So this thing here. So if you do the if you do the the, the claim chunks here, you can claim chunks and you can unclaim chunks like so. So the left click claims it, right click unclaims it. Um, all sorts of happy chappies and that if there's a creeper now that explodes on this yeah, the creeper will kind of go uh, explode and nothing else will get damaged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really really big thing anyway he also showed me um, about the claimed chunk so if you hold shift and then do that it has the little bars and it says forced loaded right I'm gonna undo it and redo it for there forced loaded means basically that you're loading that chunk whether or not you're in it. So it's basically pretending that you're in the chunk, so it's constantly going. So what we did is we went to the nether and we did that on our little lava farm. And actually, now, the whole lava situation I was having isn't happening. And since then, because these are now all absolutely filled to the brim with lava, and this is full to the brim with lava, those things over there that are being powered also full to the brim with lava. You, you, you're gradually getting the idea here. So uh, I, I, f I have a feeling, and I, I, this is unverified, but I have a feeling that when these were running out of lava, because this ender tank holds quite a bit, when these were running out of lava, I think the constant updates, the constant checks of the machines to say, hey, have you got energy? Hey, are you making energy? That from these dynamos saying, hey, have you got lava so I can make energy? I think that's what was causing the lag, because it hasn't happened again since. Like, and I, I mean, you know, touch wood here, touch wood, but it hasn't it hasn't happened since. Like, I I was online the other day, quite quite a while, I must admit, quite a while, um, doing the uh, the numbers. So if we come back over here, and I I, I can tell you by the way, I I overestimated, as you can see, I still got quite a bit of, yeah, quite a bit of a. Uh, of numbers and stuff still sort of hanging around so and 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 I don't necessarily need them because for those of uh, for those of you that are clever or cleverest or the most clever ever look at that one two three four five six seven eight which means yes yes we finally look at that we finally solving the trajectories contraption 45 so for the calculation of the guidance computer, we will need a lot of these digits. Before letting the items exit the logistical ecosystem of the calculations, make sure each digit leaves in equals amounts. Brass tunnels can solve this issue in a straightforward fashion. Um, each digit now has to be dissolved back into liquid form via the smell tree. Once it's collected 10 liquefied items of each digit, they combine into the encoded logic required for our computer. Once enough of this figurative alloy has been accumulated, it can be cast into the powerful computation matrix. The guidance computer requires eight matrix CCs to function. Depending on your data center and the mechanism assembly lines this may take a while. They weren't joking. I was on here quite a bit doing that but I can tell you now it is it is it's complete right here. I have all eight. I don't know what I need to do with all eight. That's this bit here I imagine. But I need to make that. Yeah which that's what the eight are for. But for now, for now, they can stay there. <laughs> for now, they can stay there. While we go back to the house, now that I've explained the two, the two more recent updates for you, and why why my land now says icky doot every time I walk into it, and why we've now not got the lag, let's go back and actually do the intro. So, I should probably put those in a safe place. I'm not sure where a safe place is. That's clearly not a safe place. Um, Watch me put it somewhere I shouldn't do, and then lose it. Wait, hang on. There we go. Ta-da! Ta-da! Right. 
back to back to uh, the quest chain. So let's go back to the overview because that's where we always start. So we did all of this. We did the legs. We did all of that. We were stuck over here for a while with the uh, the silicone process and the, and the stampers and the squishers and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we got to the divide by digital, which is what unlocked the divide by digital here on the chapters. Um, and you can see we're really quite close to getting to the end of this series. Really, really close. But uh, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So let's plod on. So we came over here to d divide by digital, which is the chapter five, five um, quest chain. And we've done the uh, we've done the the mechanisms. We got the logic. We made the numbers. We we calculated the numbers quite heavily, and we've now made ourselves a computation matrix. So that's quite exciting. Now, because I got fed up with numbers last episode, I also decided to take a break from the numbers, and we started on this bit of the chain because we're going to have to complete everything here before we can go to the moon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we actually went over and we got ourselves the black gold. So this bit here of the quest chain, because I think this bit's going to need another um, another assembly line because we're going to have to make the cakes for the blazes. I'll come back to that. Um, and this bit is going to need an assembly line. I have a feel because that needs to needs to happen somehow as well. And I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure how it all works, how it all goes. So we'll figure it out. We always do. So what we did last episode um, is uh, is this. So for powering our rocket, we will require some very potent fuel. Search some of the warmer biomes for a source of crude oil. Now we did that. If I zoom out and zoom in, this sort of thing here is what you're looking for. So this with the little blue dots is what you're looking for. There's another one there. There's another one there. Look for somewhere that looks generally quite hot. So this is like a little arid land, dry land, and you'll find you definitely have crude oil all over, all over the place, all over the shop. And what we did basically, we ruined that one because I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. It happens. Um, is we've we've got this one here, and this is the one where I, oh, I didn't quite force load it. I'm gonna have to go back there again. Or I don't know if I can, can I do it from here? Well, no, I will have to go back anyway. We've got the uh, we've got the crude oil being siphoned up over here, and we've used one of those nifty clever ender tanks so that it can be moved from one box to the other box rather than me having to pipe it a good hundred blocks away. We are there's a wandering trader out there again. Sir, s s sir, sir, what are you doing? Yep. Oh, okay, I think he's oh look, that's pretty though. Fungus. I don't know what I do with it, but it's pretty. Right. So, as I said, we collected up the black gold. The black gold stuff. And if we bounce our way through the mess that is our assembly lines, you'll see here, this ender tank is already full to the brim with the crude oil. And I popped in it here where we had our original, um, our original cobblestone generator slash... Um, gravel washificator so I could have my iron as and when I wanted it. So we've now got it over here. Oh, seeds, really. Um, so we can start work on it. So I think this is this is where we're gonna be this is where we're gonna be at this episode is is playing with this chappy, potentially. Yeah. So let's go back to the quest chain because we've gathered the black gold. We now have these two steps. Which, if I go here, let's read this one. So, crude oil can be refined into heavy oil using a fractionating still. So, it's another thermal item, another thermal box that you send something into and it does something. Um, if we also have a look at this one, because this is one and two, refining crude oil into heavy oil creates the byproduct of light oil. So, you remember how in the previous chapter into the box over here, where we had this sort of. Uh, this thing happening where we had the coarse sand and then we had the liquid sand it's going to be a byproduct like that thingy and i and i imagine it's probably going to get used in the final item anyway because if we go back to the divide by digital it all comes together again over here with the hydrocarbon sorter so and i believe the fractionating still makes both of those but let's see this shouldn't take forever this shouldn't i genuinely think this is not going to be too long so I wonder if we take it this way, it feels like I have more space, so let's do that. So I'm going to pop the um, fractionating still here. 
So that is the thermal series, much like some of the other machineries you've seen me using, such as the Blast Razor and the Megmatic Crucible. This one has its own UI, so you open it up, you have the energy and the place to store a battery, your, your liquids, your result after you've used your liquids, and as always, if, you, if you've got the little drop in the middle, you can click and show recipes. It's always, having, always worth having a look in here to see what kind of recipes you can do with these things, because you don't know until you look. So in here I can make energised glowstone. Uh, you can take light oil and turn it into refined fuel, so I guess that's where that comes in. Uh, you can take heavy oil and you can turn it into refined fuel and it produces tar. This one produces sulphur dust and refined fuel. Looks like it is one for almost one. It looks like the heavy oil isn't as good as the light oil because you get one for one and some sulphur dust, one for 75 and some tar. You also have crude oil here, which is what we're going to do. This is the first step. So one mega bucket, one mega bucket, yeah, of, of it makes bitumen and only 40 and 60 heavy and light oil so it isn't going to be quite one for one so we will we, i think we're going to need quite a lot of the crude oil which means we may eventually need to move the the pumpificator but for now we should be okay so let's make one of these a fill pipe and a cog to make one of those mechanical twisty ficates because we need to get the liquid from here into here first that is the first step so there that should link that guy up Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And then what we're going to do is I've actually gone ahead already and made myself a numismatic dynamo. So the numismatic one is the uh, is the one that eats pennies for energy. And so if you chop a, a, a gold coin in there, you're going to get a lot of energy. Is that 6,400? Uh, sorry, 6 million, 4,000, 40,000. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's silver coin. You get... 100. So it's probably better to chuck a gold one in there, but I don't I don't want to be I don't want to do that. But I have got quite a bit of gold and or silver and an easy way of getting it. So we're going to pluck it at the back out of the way, nice and happy, like so. Uh, I might actually move that around there because I think we're going to have to siphon it out somehow as well. But we might need to use some kind of special retrievers for that. But uh, there, so we're going to pluck him on there. We're going to pop a um, hop it on the top because I want to be pushing silver coins in and then we just need to get a way of this guy being twiddly ficated. So we pop that there uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. and then we're just going to go down and pop a, pop a water wheel in here so that we can get things moving because that's the whole idea chaps, that's the whole idea is moving things. Right, one and two. And then if we pop the wheel in here, we should should see some action. Should. Hopefully that's low enough. As you know me by now, I do kind of like to hide my water wheels. I have been refining the uh, the system that we've been creating so far. I've been refining it a little bit to make it nicer. Okay, so sort of. We might need to go down one more. Otherwise I would have to... Yeah, one more. One more as we go a little bit further into the dirt so we can hide it proper because we have been making the base look a little bit nicer at the very least at the very least not that it matters because we'll be going to the moon and we might not be coming back very soon maybe right oop, 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 choop, oop. out the way you right water more water Always remember to follow the V's in the grooves so that you know that you're going to get the most amount of power from it. One more bucket of water. And uh, we're going to block up the back part of this so I can get the most amount of energy because you want to get the most amount of energy. Like that, see? Now you've got your... Yeah. Now you've got your, your super duper speed. Or at least your slightly better speed anyway. And I mean, slightly better speed is better than nothing. So, there. Right. Close that up so we don't have to worry about it. Because now it is moving and it is suckificating the crude oil from in there. You can already see it's gone across and it's filling up quite happily in here. So let's fire it up, I reckon, and we'll see 
what happens because we've got some in here now so let's uh we might need to speed this bit up at some point but uh for now should be okay should be okay and there we go you can see now it's starting to work the energy is coming in now that i've chucked the pennies in and these are just going to slowly whittle down um and eventually I, I can just pop more in there or whatever and we've got plenty of ways to make fuel or pennies because we've got the tree farm here we've got the the um the washificators over there making the flint so we are we are laughing and we've already gone through one whole process like that beautiful and it seems to use one it does use one bucket at a time not the full thing because that is four buckets four mini buckets so but we've really got some bitumen we've really got some heavy oil and some light oil so i don't know what you can use bitumen on so let's pull that out and have a look so you can make a block cool you can use it as item as a, as a smelter that's cool okay you can actually turn it into coke tar and heavy oil via the pyrolyzer cool cool okay so there there is some things you can use with it but it doesn't look like it is something that you get every time from the looks of it let's have a look 10 percent chance okay so it, it's just a, a little bonus on the side i suppose but that that is that pretty much i mean that's that done in 15 minutes <laughs> we're laughing now because we kind of have this going we just need to get a bucket of it now right heavy oil bucket look at that so we're going with heavy oil first apparently I got it out first because I want to use each separately. Mm -hmm. So if we, I think we're going to have one pipe going this way and one pipe going this way. So if we pop one here, we may need to make another one still because we've got the heavy oil, we've got the light oil, and then we have to combine the three still over here. So we'll probably run it in a bit of a square. Right. I hope all that made sense. It may not have done, and that's fine if it didn't. One, two, three, and this time what I'm going to do now is instead of that, like that, we're going to make a twisty one again, so cog and pipe to make twisty one, and we're going to replace that pipe and that pipe, so this one and this one. I think I did that the wrong way around. It wants to be that way around. Right, cool. So, for you, those of you that are, oh, hang on, it's getting dark, let's sleep. And I might bring my bed over here as well because if we're working over there now I don't want to keep dodging all the way back over here. We've been in this little this little arena for the last couple of episodes, so let's be in a new arena for a bit. So we're gonna go over here with the bed now. Do da do da. Back to almost where we started with all of these uh with all of these these um assembly lines. Because this is this is literally where we had our our couple generation if you see episode two or three. Right. So for those of you, now that we've got the daylight back again. For those of you that didn't see this, the smart fluid pipe. So if I come over here and do W, the smart fluid pipe is kind of clever in that it will tell the liquid coming out only to allow a particular type of liquid. So in here you've got chocolate and milk. You want only chocolate to come out. What you do is you use a bucket with the fluid in it on there. And as you can see, it will only pull out the chocolate. It won't pull out the milk. If you didn't have that there, it would just start pulling whatever liquid it found first. And usually it's it's almost guaranteed it will be the wrong one. And yes, you can have both types coming along the pipe and split it later on. It is possible. It doesn't happen at the same time. As you can see, it will get to the bottom of the chocolate and then it will pull the milk. So you don't have to have two whole pipes going to it. You can use that. Which makes me wonder, actually, if I do that. So then if I say... So if I connect that there, pick you up for now. And then if I say, right, I only want you to, uh, is that the wrong way around again? I think that's the wrong way around again. So let's put a pipe there and a pipe there. Just to be awkward. Right. You. So I only want, in this instance, I only want the um, heavy oil to go into this one. I don't want anything else to go in. I just want the heavy oil. Okay. Da -da -da. Yeah, we may still need to take a space, actually. Hang on. Let's think about this. Because I want the first one wants to be 
the sucker for cater. Like so. So that I can pull it out of the pipes. And then I want to bring one like that. One like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. So then we can have the two different smart fluid pipes. Where around did he have them? Okay, so it is, it's like it's coming out of the thing. So one there and one there. There you go. So this pipe, I just want the uh, the heavy oil to come through this side. And I want the light oil to come through this side. I don't have the light oil in a bucket yet. But I only want the light oil to come through this side. So let's pop down the fractionated mist steel. Hedja, like that. It's not pulling anything right now because it's not connected. So let's quickly get it connected. So if we go hedja, hedja. Incredibly messy. Love it. There we go. You'll now notice it should not come out of this pipe and go into here. Should. Uh, really? Give me two seconds. So. Okay, well it got in there, but um, okay, I didn't know you could use that to turn these items. Wow, cool. Alright. Gotta be the wrong way around. Got to be the wrong way around. So let's put it the way around. And then let's click on it and say, right, you. There. And now let's try that again. So then this one will join up into another one. There. Uh, wait, no, wrong. There. Right, now let's try that again. <laughs> That appears to work. There you go. Increasing and not coming out of this pipe. Lovely. Same with that one. Recha and re stores where it's no plants and recharges other items. Which actually, that isn't too bad to make. Stores where it's no plants and recharges other items. Hold check for details. We could make that. We have lead and stuff. And um, redstone and the flux coil thingies. One and two. Let's see if that will help without being a pain. Let's uh, right, quickly sleep and let's go chuck it in the charger at the, at the seaside and see if that works. Not ideal until I can find out another way, but it wasn't the world's expen most expensive thing to make either, so nah. If it was the world's most expensive thing to make, then I would have been a bit annoyed. Right, so let's see. I'm hoping you will charge them. You will. Lovely. Look at that. Oh, goodness me. Look at that go down. Crikey. Well, it'll just have to keep up. The other option is we can just make some more dynamos because we do have a load of dynamos. But they're a pain. We could make some more sterling ones. You see, the invar machines are the, are the choke point right now. We do have copper. What was the copper one? Was the magmatic is the copper one, and I do have some copper machines, so I could, I could use that. Do, 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 do. Well, we got sterling with the for a gourmand, but I don't think I have enough food for that. To be fair, that's entirely fine. Right, let's take you two out for now. Well, let's leave one of you in. This will start recharging. There you go. See, it's already doing. So this should be, yeah, trickling up. There you go. Lovely. Right, over here then. Oh, basalt. <laughs> Stop it. That basalt machine, honestly, I've never met something so toxic and annoying. <laughs> right. You, sir, are full of heavy oil. And now you're being charged. So you should now make me some unrefined rocket fuel, hopefully. Hopefully. <gasps> Refined! <gasps> Look at that! <laughs> cool! Okay, fine. Cool. <laughs> How exciting is that? How exciting is that? Mm -hmm. Very neat. Very, very neat. Now I need to figure out how to get it out. Which I assume I can just pipe it out. Pipe and pipe 
and then we're going to tell it, I only want light oil going in there, please. And then, light oil! Ta-da! Cool, look at that. So now this should be sucker for getting out the oil. Should. Let's have a look. 180. That's doing the thing. Still only sucker for getting out 80. There's 400 in there. Is that because it was transferring over the 286? 180. It's a pity we can't see what's going through these at any particular point. It's thinking about it. Because I can see drips here. Or I could. Ah, there we go. So yeah, it's going to have a bit of a weird delay between the two because it's going to be sucking and pulling one and then the other, but it it works. Right, meanwhile... Ah, quest completed! Hydrocarbon sorter. As we pull two different liquids going back and forth. Right, awesome. So let's take you out. That'll still keep working because it's got charge over there and we can switch it out with the other one that's in the charger right now. It's all the way over here. It's a bit annoying, but there we go. Because then we switcheroo, switcheroo. Doo -doo -doo. And then we can have a look at the quests again and sort out the rest of it. Meanwhile, that does appear to be keeping up. It is going to run out at some point. But for now, it does appear to be keeping up. Right, you go in there. So that it will then start processing the light oil into more refined fuel. How exciting. How exciting is this, guys? How exciting. Uh-huh. So, over here, in the quest chain... It's all sorted. It's all good. Look at that. It's all good. Amazing. Right. So after all of that mess, <laughs> I don't think I actually need to... Wait. I thought I needed to make another refractionating thingy, but I it doesn't look like we do, because it looks like that is the fuel. Both the heavy and light oil can be further refined into the suitable rocket fuel. So I literally, that's it. We've done it. We've, we've made the fuel. Cool. We've made the fuel, guys. We've done it. So now, now we need to make ourselves some more colours so I can actually like label off this next. Uh, really? Did that just happen? Ugh. Cactus is a bully. Yes, you. Easiest way to make the next colour, I reckon. That. Cactus. Because what we want to do then is we want to pull the fuel. Wow. In the middle of the wrong conveyor belts. <laughs> We're going to pull the fuel into here. Into this, I should reckon. So if we pop that there. It has filled up with lava because that's what we think it should be having for now. But it's not actually what it should be having. We want it to have something else. But it's fine. We're going to make another of you goose. And then we're going to go to you. Like that. Except the other way around. And another one of you. Like that. Like that. So they both connect into here for now. I haven't turned it on and I won't turn it on until I'm ready. But that's that. So then if we connect up you two, like so, pull it over to here using a shaft. Yeah. Yeah. And then hedger. Although, uh, let's not do that just yet. Um, yep. There. Because that right now is still lava, and we don't want it. We don't want it pulling out the fuel and burning it immediately because that's a noise. That's not. That wouldn't. That wouldn't help. We don't want it to be pulling lava into these things either. Not that it would, but I don't. I don't want it to do that. So there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right. Let's go cook up the the cactus, and we can change that colour on that, and then we've got ourselves a source of fuel. Amazing. Right. Greeny, 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 which says empty that out. Look at that. It's it's back to being empty because there's no other green ender tanks around here. So we're going to turn that around and that around because I want it to come out of there. And then that. Because what should happen then is it should. Oh, look at that. It's sucking up the fuel. Why did it suddenly get really bright here? 
This fuel glow. Does it? Does it glow? I feel like it's letting off a light source. Huh. Unexpected. But cool. Unexpected, but cool. And we can just chuck that in there as well. Ta-da. Amazing. We have rocket fuel, people. Rocket fuel. Look at that. Building up. Are you hyped? I can tell you immediately, I'm hyped. I'm so hyped. That still scares me, you know. Whenever the trees get destroyed. Also, that's a lot of bees. Huh. Oh, well. Right. Yeah, that appears to work, doesn't it? Right? Look at that. So we've got the refractionating steels, which is refractionating all of the refractionating stuff, which is making the refractionated fuel. <laughs> that was a lot of refractions, I know. So we can go to the moon. Amazing. So the next episode, we're, uh, we're focusing down into the, the top half of this chapter. So treat for the heat. So we're going to be forming the plastics that we need. And then we're going to be making the bricks. And then we'll be able to make the attire and the launch pad, etc, etc. Amazing. I'm probably still going to do a little bit of work off screen just to make sure that we've got enough fuel. Because, I mean, at the moment we haven't even got a quarter of a tank. So I'll probably do a little bit more AFKing. All I can tell you is I'm very, very happy, very happy that we don't have to make any more of those numbers because that, my friends, was a pain in the bottom. Absolute pain in the bottom. So yeah, that that's uh, really rather productive, I would say. Really rather productive. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yes. Perfect. Right. That said, let's, uh, let's sling off for the night. I shall, uh, I shall see you all on Wednesday's episode. It might be that next Friday, maybe, steady on chaps, it might be the next Friday, it all going well, we might get to the moon next Friday. Oh my god, right? Oh my god. Alright, Beans, well, uh, thank you very much for accompanying me on this journey. I shall see you all on the next episode on Wednesday, and in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I'll get the videos up on YouTube over the weekend and on Monday as usual and we'll see you then. Good night and goodbye.